Hi, I'm Paul Roberts, and this is part two of What If Conscious Counseling 101. What if he's just a, a worker, you know? I think one time in the scriptures it said there, oh, there have already been many antichrists. What if he's, I'm not going to give him the credit of being the, the full antichrist. But he's obviously a worker for antichrist because his actions and mentality by his own mouth is antithetical to the teachings, the parables, the teachings of Jesus. All you have to do is just take the Sermon on the Mount, hold them up as a litmus test to each one of the things that Jesus said, and he's the antithetical teaching of that. I've had these things on, I'll give it to my, my friends and family so they can look at these things. There's not a breakthrough. I'm trying my hardest to scream out, the emperor has no clothes. But I can't scream out to the world because we've all been reduced to one force. No matter how idiotic we are, no matter how extreme we are, no matter how norm we are, unless we're blessed by extreme celebrity or something like that. A person that has comprehension of difficult or higher concepts that other people can't understand or don't want to listen to has no authority to be able to have a louder voice, which is fine. I'm not here to be a leader. I'm not here to go up to the highest mountain and be shown all the kingdoms of man and be tempted by saying you can have this if you follow a certain path. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to serve even if it's only one or very few more than one. We have to understand at this point in our life that all the fixings for a rehearsal, a dress rehearsal if you will, of the end days is upon us right now. All that we would need whether factors get worse or better. Right now, all we've got is numbers on a board going down. I don't think they were over over 20, personally. I think everything Trump did was fake. It was all because he gave so much money to the wealthy that they bought back their own stock. I believe that the, the growth curve of Obama for seven years that he had it, coming back from 2008, that was genuine, a slow growth forward. I always vote for whoever's going to inch us forward. The way that the forefathers set up our country, that's the only way we're ever going to get anywhere. People that voted for a savior because of their desperation caused what's happening now. Many of them, without being judgmental, probability-wise, are on the dark road. Many of the people that we surround ourselves by, probability-wise, must be on the dark road. If there's anything to this by faith, must be. We must act as if that's likely without being judgmental of who is who, because we don't know. Each one can turn. What about the woman that was uh, washing Jesus' feet with her hair, okay? She was more of a servant and more crying about her sins because she was a greater sinner. And she was more worthy of being pulled up and redeemed, okay? So the lowliest among us that are on the dark road, all they need to do is realize it and they're redeemed. They're welcomed in. They can't be pushed down and being less just because of their current state where their lack of conscious understanding cripples them. Very important to realize that. So I have to proceed forward believing that every single one of us around us, by the way, I'm driving out to where I'm going with no traffic. It's just about unheard of. Hey, people are doing their best. We were doing it before we were told we had to. We were locking ourselves indoors so that we wouldn't spread anything more fast than we could if we were out and about because we didn't want the elderly and infirmed among us to have a bigger chance of suffering, catching it, and having uh, death or severe illness. There are still some today that make fun of what we're doing. They're changing their tune really rapidly. Even Sean Hannity, within the course of less than two weeks, even all those on Fox News, Every time you see about it, it's like instead of saying the coronavirus, you make sure it says Chinese virus. Just like Trump the other day at a press briefing. Thank goodness he's finally talking to us again. He doesn't need Sarah Sanders. He's finally talking again. Well, he's trying to save his presidency. He's a trapped animal in a corner, doing whatever he can to look like he's a leader so that he might have a chance to be voted for to stay out of prison. What a sham. But the point is, what if? What if this whole thing is for others to have one last big chance to see even if this isn't it or if it is before the final tallies will be taken now obviously someone like me that met with Rick and has been thinking about this all the days of my life since then my only last 
cross-bearing hurdle I've got to get over is to be worthy of death and accept that rather than taking the mark. But others that don't quite believe or don't quite see may have a harder time than that because I had to face what I would know is coming and others would more likely choose to not face what they know is coming because they don't understand it or know it <laughs> and they're going to make a lesser decision not necessarily because they're bad people or evil but really they are why because probability wise they're most likely on the broad road they're most likely in the darkness so they are going to subscribe if they're not enlightened to the evil choice which is being in the darkness not what the creator would want that's what the definition of evil is not be able to see the light the light of the world jesus they would make the choice whether out of ridiculing someone like me or these ideas that the few that do talk about them that aren't radicals but do talk about them as consciously as they can me here with my little 10 now 11 subscribership for the last person i counseled 11 subscribership now i've been doing this for 20 years but i just started a new, a new channel a year and a half and i've gotten up to 11. that's about as small as you can get no one's going to listen to anything i say even those close to me they say you don't know any of this stuff conscious counseling 101 is about sharing in a secular way for those who may not be able to see the light or those who are trying in a religious way to see the light but aren't seeing or are missing big parts of it conscious counseling 101 is designed to allow me to stay razor sharp and focused on things that I don't know but can plainly see and therefore believe even though they can't be proven. So I'm one of those that is blessed because he believes but has not seen. I'm one of those that will be greater by being lesser because I'll never be a leader, I'll only be a servant. But I'm one of those that's greater simply because those that were there and saw didn't even believe to the extent that those that come now are able to believe without seeing. I'm greater in the sense that I have that light and I can see that light and I share that light, but I'm lesser in the sense that the only thing I'm doing in life is sharing that light, which is to be nothing more than a servant, which is the ultimate example that Jesus gave to us by the final commandment, which is the highest commandment that contains all the commandments, to do and love to our brothers as we would have done to us through his teachings in love. And his final example, physical example, of washing the feet of his disciples so he could show what he was here for, to serve. That's what we're to be. The ultimate highest calling is to be that. When you go and you beat your drum and no one hears your drum beat, you still beat it. You're the drummer boy. You're the little drummer boy. Whether you're seen or not, it all ends happily like in the little drummer boy cartoon at Christmas time or not is irrelevant. You say the emperor has no clothes. That's your whole life as an artist, as the being that you are with your experiences and everything that adds up to gives you the ability to say that. That's what you do. You accept the ramifications of the cross you have to bear and those in your life that you cannot, you cannot figure out how they can be what they are in growing up in the same life as you and your only means to get by each day no matter how sorrowful you are about it is to be able to accept that the words were uttered that you must be willing to live and leave your father your mother and brother to follow him so as i go forth that's the difficult thing i have to do and to face that this could be the what if the end days or a dress rehearsal for it anybody that comes back after this and doesn't believe that both sides of government both parties could cause this and come together in unison be united and all the things in the world and all the people in the world and all the laws and means and resources of the world will be taken from them unless whatever the big unless is that brings forth the subscription they must have and the number they must take. If you don't see this now and believe it as a possibility, you never will, would be my guess. But I'm taking the time in these two car series videos today to make it all about what if. I'm not telling you it is. I'm not chicken little. 
okay? Yes, I am the boy in the emperor's new clothes. Yes, he is antithetical to Christ's teachings. Yes, he's wearing no clothes. Take note. Please take note because you will be voting again probably before the world ends. That's obvious, folks. I will say that. I can't know it because I can't know his soul and he could change. But you're supposed to judge the tree by the fruit, make an assessment without judging the man's ultimate soul. That's what I'm doing. I'm surrounded by people that I know and love and well, if I'm capable of loving them, like I said, we have to be able to leave them. We have to be able to leave them to prove our worthiness. I love them in an agape type sense. And that's saying something. Because a lot of times I don't even feel like I'm loved in an agape type sense from the very people I'm talking about. Yes, even though you are evil, you give good gifts to your children was said to those that not seen. That explains why I have been given things to work with become what I am. But it's what I do with those things. It's who I become with my light, my vision, my analytical ability, and all the things that I am all through my life and all through the filters that I've processed everything. And only believe because there's nothing to stand on that I know. That's my greed motto before I ever even moved forward with conscious counseling initially. I had to accept that. I had to realize that was what made me unique and gave me the power to even say these things in the first place. Because that forces you to do everything on faith. It forces you to. You admit up front, you're not even leading man. You admit up front, you know nothing. You admit up front that all the keys would be in the word for anybody that would want to look. And all you're doing is screaming out like John the Baptist in the wilderness. That's all you're doing. That's the only power you have. That was a, another really good sermon just like Jesus demonstrated in his end days, washing the feet. This is my screaming out in the wilderness. What if, take note people, what if this was not a dress rehearsal? What if this is it? Would you be prepared? Can you get yourself prepared? Can you see the light that I try to help you to learn to see through Conscious Counseling 101? I'm Paul Roberts. Go and do.